Hey guys, welcome to this edition of Scruff's Garage. Uh, today, I'm going to show you how to take apart a hydraulic lifter. This is one out of my uh, LS1, so all of the LS motors uh, are essentially the same when it comes to the lifters. <clears throat> I think the current GM part numbers for the LS7 lifters, uh, at least the last time I looked, but it could be different. Uh, anyway, uh, this is particularly beneficial. Uh, I'll show you how to flip around some components inside of here. Uh, so that you can make this a solid lifter. Uh, not that you would run it that way, but it's particularly helpful uh, when you're setting up piston to valve clearance. Um, you don't, since you're not running the motor, <clears throat> and if you're installing a new lifters that haven't been pumped up yet, um, you don't want the plunger in here to collapse uh, as you're rotating the motor over, checking piston to valve clearance. Uh, also helpful when you're measuring push rod length as well. Um, takes out any variability that the uh, lifter is collapsing and that could be changing uh, the measurements that you get. So <clears throat> I'll show you how to do this. Uh, so there's a clip that holds the plunger piece uh, inside the body of the, the lifter. Uh, so we take a small flathead and we'll slowly work this out. And I'll keep a towel here. So there's the, the clip. Now we can pull the plunger out. So we have this piece. So we'll set them up over here. Clip. This top piece. Then down in here, I'm sure you can't see in there very well. Uh, there's another plunger uh, that also has a, a spring uh, under it. This is will have oil uh, built up in it. So take a moment to drain out some of the oil. Okay, so <clears throat> it'd be difficult to see at this point, but down inside here you'll see another uh, plunger piece. Um, looks, it's a larger version of this. Uh, and if you hit it with a uh, a pick, right, you can see that it moves a little bit, but you can't pull it out. Um, it's hydraulically locked in there. So there's a plunger ball. If you look straight down in the center, there's a plunger ball um, that if you depress the plunger in there that will allow uh, release the vacuum and then you can use one of these hooked uh, picks to pull the um, that plunger out there we go I don't know if you can let me see straight down in there like I said there's a little plunger ball and it's retained in this and that's what's sealing off these little ports here on the side. See more oil comes out. Then that spring, so that spring was under this. And we'll bring it this way. And that's it. So that's the entire um, the hollow body down in there. Uh, no need to take this wheel out. That's obviously riveted in. All right, so I'm going to clean this out just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to reverse things. So for the purpose of, of this exercise, we want to make this uh, where it doesn't compress. Um, so it doesn't really matter if you reuse the spring or not. So normally, the spring sits on on this side. Uh, we're going to flip this component over and put it in this way. Well, it's this way. We're going to put it in upside down. Um, and we could put that spring in there, but it pretty much completely sits in there 
uh, and it's not going to make much of a difference. See, it's such tight clearances in there that if you have any oil in there, then it really creates a, a tight seal. So there's a springiness to it. Uh, but that's not going to hurt anything. But we'll have to compress this. So then you put this top plunger on. And now we're going to put the spring in. Or the retaining clip. There we go. That was more difficult than it had to be. So I started to get this clip back in. I got uh, the first corner worked in. Uh, then I kind of twisted to get the next, the shoulder over here worked in. And then that shoulder and then uh, this final side. So like I said, not too bad. Just got to play with it for a moment. Um, <clears throat> so what you'll see, so now it's a, a solid lifter. You, you couldn't compress this uh, even with the, the pressure of the valve springs. Uh, what you will notice is there's just a little play in there. So I did this, did another one uh, previously, and I chucked this up in my vise, and then I put a, um, a dowel indicator on it just to see how much uh, compression I was getting out of that plunger, just how much play is in there. And it's about 1.5 thousandths, uh, which is very little, um, though you might want to take that into consideration as you're measuring uh, piston of the valve clearance. Just keep in mind that um, you know, this, this plunger is compressing about a thousandth uh, of an inch. But like I said, uh, overall fairly simple. So that's how the um, hydraulic roller comes apart. Um, like I said, there's only just a, a couple of pieces in there. Um, pretty simple. And like I said, you can flip around some of the internal components and make it a solid lifter, so to speak, um, for the purpose of measuring piston and the valve clearance and uh, measuring push rod length as well obviously you wouldn't run the motor this way uh, but to keep the the lifter from collapsing uh, as you're doing some measurement uh, this is a simple way to do it so uh, it won't cost you any money and uh, like i said pretty useful uh, so i hope you enjoyed this um, let me know if you find this beneficial uh, how your experience goes using uh, this method uh, as you're building your engine. So thanks for tuning in to Scruff's Garage. As always, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.